Democracy in the context of nation states has never stopped the country, no matter whether or not it's democratic or non-democratic, from the military attacking and the colonizing other peoples and the states. On the contrary, democracy sometimes was often a means of mobilizing mass support for the colonization and the military action in the, from the 19th to 20th century history. At bottom, civil rights within the nation states do not provide a notion of equality that extends beyond their borders. So this is the, the, our, especially from perspective of third world countries. Second, the reciprocal relations among the democracy, equality, and the nation states in the age of globalization often set the stage for the exploitation of the resources and the labor of other countries and the societies. So-called globalization has been caused mainly by the international expansion of capital, production, and the consumption. It is present in every state. Hence, the model of the development adopted by one society often has repercussions for other societies. All of the economic and the social decisions reached by the very large societies such as like the United States, China, India, EU, all that has the, uh, the, the exert a uh, major influence on other countries as well. Using democratic procedures to foment imperialist mobilization is nothing new. In a contemporary model of the democracy, people outside a given society have no right to participate in the making of important decisions within other political communities, even though uh, those decisions will ultimately affect them too. In this sense, the right of citizenship works to exclude others. I'm not saying give up this citizenship, it's how to expand the connotation of that the citizenship are extremely important. The third challenge to democratic child is the demise of the cultural pluralism when it comes to large-scale immigration. Waves of immigration have been set in motion by globalization, market orientation and inequality in the countries of origin as well as on the global scale. Migrants altered the composition of the population in many of the countries they seek to enter. The host societies accept them only as a labor force without giving any official recognition to their cultural identities. In hopes of protecting their own interests, uh, the identity politics in the immigration society uh, dovetails well with the abstractness of the capitalist production. The demise of the cultural pluralism has two implications. For one thing, the nation state cannot integrate the migrants without causing friction. On the other hand, the migrants' efforts to retain their own culture ultimately hyper the process of integration. Compromising between the nation state and the politics of identity usually takes the form of an endeavor to reshape the differences into re renewed hierarchies within the structure of the appearance. So in that sense, it's not only the global level, but it's also in the domestic level in China too. It's a migration issue. It's not only, tra only transnational, but also happened in China in different regions. That caused the, the, the problem of the uh, so-called identity politics in order to defend themselves. However, that the identity politics easily lead to the new nationalism because the identity politics reduces the, the complicity of the human being, different dimensions, only focus on one dimension, for example, religious identity, ethnic identity, we actually, as a human being, we are the citizens, we are the members of whole, of, of, of our family, uh, members of the, our society is a complex, the, uh, the, the human being. Identity politics used to reduce the complexity into the one dimension. So, on the one hand, you have the domination from the, the whole system, you have the resist, resistance from below, but related to the one dimension again. So, these are the dangers, I think, that we are facing in order to have a real substantive 
idea of democracy. We need to rethink about these, all these issues.